Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Wings. This is continuing my series of reviews where I go through the filmography, or as much of the filmography as I can, of William Wellman. And this is probably the film from his that really made him a major director. And it's also the first film to ever win Best Picture, which at that time was called Outstanding Picture. I consider it, and I think a lot of people consider it, one of the great silent films. It's certainly one of the greatest war silent films and World War I films ever made. Part of that is because William Wellman fought in the Lafayette Escadrille in World War I, and he was a flyer, and he felt he knew how to film a World War I epic like no one else. And that's pretty much how he got the job. And how he got his nickname Wild Bill Wellman, it's not just for directing, he had it before he, I mean it stuck after he became a Hollywood director because he was pretty wild, but he got that nickname from World War I and from his flying days and from dogfighting and all the stuff he did in the air. There had been World War I epics before, like the Big Parade. The Big Parade actually was a big influence on William Wellman when he was making this film. He actually saw the Big Parade, I think, over 20 times, he said in his book. I think he said 22, 24 times, which was quite a few times, especially considering there was no video then. He literally went to the theater to see the Big Parade. And that film was directed by King Vidor. You can kind of see the influence of King Vidor on Wellman. So uh, when I read that, I was like, oh wow, that makes a lot of sense. Wings is really about two guys, Jack and David, played by Buddy Rogers and Roger Arlen. They grew up in the same hometown and were after the same girl, even though Buddy Rogers' character Jack had Clara Bow's character, who Clara Bow's gorgeous. I don't know how people turn down Clara Bow. That's the one part of this film I've never believed. It's like, how can you turn down her over this other girl? Clara Bow's a great actress and she makes up for it. So these two guys, they go to World War One. they become flyers and have this adversarial relationship but then become their buddies but they're very adversarial and they're after this girl who only really likes Roger Arlen's character David and she doesn't really like Jack and you know they become war heroes and it's really about their relationship throughout the war and seeing these character arcs of Jack and David and Mary who's played by Clara Bow who also goes to war with them they don't actually see her I mean they do see her but they don't realize they see her the film is definitely about those two guys and their camaraderie. When you look at the guys who were flyers in those days, they were considered at the time to be like the modern day knights, you know, modern day 1914. But then I think there is amount of chivalry and honor and camaraderie that comes with being a flyer, as you can see through this film. And when you look at William Wellman, I think one of the things I think of when I think of Wild Bill Wellman is he's an anti-authority director. He was a studio director. You look at his pre-code stuff and like Public Enemy and Wild Boys of the Road and stuff like that, I would honestly be like, you know, he's very anti-authority. He does what he wants. When you look at Wings, Wings isn't very anti-authority. It's almost a little surprising how different the direction of it is the army gave a lot of men to wings and they donated estimated to have been like 15 million dollars at the time of resources of men and planes and tanks and everything and they shot this film in texas around where military bases and training grounds were so that they could get the look of a war and the amount of extras they needed and you could think maybe that's why this film is i wouldn't say it's pro authority but it doesn't really question authority i started to think about that while i was watching this film how different that is from the later period because that's something i feel that really went through all his work throughout the rest of the decades of his film career and not so much in this film and this film's so well known for him it's considered one of his best films and i very much agree but i think what it is is that when he made this film since he was in world war one i think he really believed in that system and believed in the camaraderie and believed in being a flyer for the lafayette escadrille and like fighting for something and you know it meant a lot to him it meant something he believed in kind of that order and structure at that point and then when you get further in his career, he had a very tough time making this. He was really on his own. He went through a couple divorces before he eventually met the woman he would be married to for the majority of his life. And for a long time, I think he was kind of by himself. And that lone man idea that kind of runs through a lot of his films and the anti-authority idea, I don't think it wouldn't have fit in this film. And I think it's representative also of how he didn't really feel that way about World War I. So it wouldn't have worked whatsoever and it would have just felt alien to him. So that's why he, I feel like he did that and that's why this film is so different from the pre-code stuff. In that respect, he fought for World War I and I think he believed in what he was fighting for. And you don't have the trench warfare drama because he was in the air, you know? He didn't, he wasn't in the trenches. So, so it's a different kind of a film and it's a different kind of a perspective. And 
and he wanted to fly and it was the cool new technology. Flying in airplanes were fairly new during World War One. It was the first war with airplanes, so it was a very big deal. Actually, this film got released soon after Charles Lindbergh's flight. And so not only they knew World War I films would be big box office because Forrest of the Apocalypse and Big Parade were both major box office hits, but the public was so interested in flight at that point. And especially you look at how this film was shot. I mean, the cinematography in this film is still amazing. It's just amazingly beautiful how uh, Wellman and the cinematographer, Harry Perry, who would go on to shoot uh, Hell's Angels. When they shot this film, they tied the camera to the plane. And so both the actors had to learn how to fly and they'd really be up there flying. And the camera was pointed at them and you could see the background moving as the plane's moving. And it's really just thrilling to watch. I almost sometimes, I'm not sure if I should watch the actors or watch the background because you really get a sense of how fast the plane's going and seeing like the background change and getting farther away. And even when the camera's not pointing at the cockpit, Pit and you see the pilot, you get these amazing dogfight sequences that even Tony Scott in one of the Wellman documentaries I watched pointed out that this was an influence on Top Gun and he watched it before he made Top Gun. And I think it's on par with some of that stuff. It's so thrilling in this film, like just seeing how he shot this. He got this pretty much because he said, I was in World War One. I, I was a flyer. I feel like I know how to shoot this and shoot this the right way. And they let him have it. It was kind of pretty crazy that they let this unknown director because he really wasn't that well known he had done some like b westerns kind of genre westerns that we can't see he did the boob which i previously reviewed to this and he'd done some pictures but he wasn't like a big name director i mean they could have given this to demille or someone else but they didn't and they gave it to him because he kind of convinced them that he could be able to shoot it because he had that war experience. And I think because he had that war experience, you get really amazing cinematography. Not to denote the role of the cinematographer and the stuff that Harry Perry did in this film because he did an amazing job, but I think certainly when you have a director who knows how to use a cinematographer and knows how to use the camera, you get a much better shot film. More recently, I'd say Spielberg is very much like that. When you look at Wellman, there's a lot of visual directness that you're used to in this film and he really, you can tell he knew how to use the camera to set mood and tell parts of the story and really show things about the flyers at that time. and everything and and that he came from a perspective to really show that and a well-rounded perspective where he knew it from his own life experience and and he really brings that to it and able to show flight because he loved flying so much you really get a, a love of flight from this film the way he got the actors to know how to fly and do some of the stunts they would do and the shots i mean it looks like honestly a lot of these shots were far more planned out than they probably were. It just added so much amazing production value. Audiences at the time, they weren't used to the way this was shot. It kind of shows you what flight is almost like. Like if you feel like you're really there, in there with the pilots. His war films are not very, I wouldn't consider them anti-war films but I wouldn't say they're totally pro-war films. They're very real about it. It's not like glossed over or anything. He's not trying to gloss over anything about war. He's showing a well-rounded view of war, showing like the grittiness and the dirtiness and the positive and kind of all the emotions with it. You can tell from this film how visually direct he really is. This film doesn't have just great cinematography because of just the flight sequences. I mean, there's two shots in particular. There's one with the swing, which is just amazing. When you have Richard Arlen with the girl that they both like, Sylvia, the camera's stuck on, is rigged to the swing. The swing keeps going back and forth, and as it goes up, uh, and it goes down and you can see, you know, the background, you see the car slowly come up and then you see Buddy Rogers' character get out and come and talk to them. It's it's really well done. It was like really smart. He can even make a sequence of two lovers in a swing have a cinematic quality about it that you really wouldn't expect. In the boob, he shot two lovers on a swing and it was fairly routinely shot. And in this, he really gave it some style and panache. And also the sequence where he's panning the camera through all these couples uh, at tables in uh, that restaurant in Paris or the nightclub or wherever. And he actually staged it pretty well because he has the people like break away. Most of the time they're laughing or something. There's only one couple. There's one of the couples that was like, oh, you didn't move fast enough. Damn it. You, we almost had it perfect. Everyone pretty much gets apart right in time and then it ends on the pouring of the glass of champagne. It's just, it's just an amazing sequence. And you can look at that. You can look at the trace of that. You look at, you know, it went to Orson Welles did that in Citizen Kane where you'd have the pan go and you can almost see the things breaking 
away, you know, as the camera's going through. And then Bogdanovich, very influenced by Orson Welles, did that. And even Wes Anderson did a shot like that at the beginning of Moonrise Kingdom. This was a time in silent film right before sound came in and fucked everything up for a little bit. And even, I don't think sound really fucked up Wellman too much. I think, he, I feel like he almost refused to be held back. But in later silent films, the camera was really going all over the place and panning. They were really getting into some really interesting, amazing camera movements towards the end of silent film. I love later silent film just because the way it's shot. It's like, you see like how much potential they had, you know, it's almost sad that it ended. This had an appearance by Gary Cooper. He's only in a minute and a half, but he's always mentioned with this film and Wellman loved his performance. He does a great performance. Gary Cooper didn't like it so much because at one point he kind of almost picks his nose. He wanted them to reshoot it, but Wellman wouldn't, but he liked him so much that he put him in his next film, The Legion of the Condemned with Clara Bow. He knew there was something about Gary Cooper and he really wanted his part in the film as Cadet White to be very memorable, but he even had uh, Gary Cooper on set for the majority of filming because he just liked him so much. Clara Bow, who was put in this film before Wellman was attached, she was cast without her consent, and originally they were going to cast big stars. I don't know who was originally they thought would play David and Jack, but Wellman decided to go with mostly unknowns. I like how Clara Bow's arc is similar to both Jack and David's. Even though Clara Bow's character of Mary Preston isn't in the film as much, she's definitely an important part of it. Clara Bow, I think, was really good in this movie. I don't think she gets the amount of respect maybe she deserves. She didn't like that she was just there for vanity. This isn't really what she's known for. This isn't the glamorous role that it was, certainly. But I, I really quite like her in this movie. It was the first film to win Best Picture. Wellman didn't get to go to that award show. He wasn't nominated for Best Director. Wellman didn't get to go to the first Oscars because they were kind of pissed off at him because he made them go through hell, because he made them wait forever to make sure the clouds are in the right formation so you can really get the depth of field to see the flying. And if you look at how he shot clouds in this, it's just simply beautiful and it's really worth waiting for, I think. You know, it kind of worked out for him. But he pissed everyone off and they didn't invite him to the New York premiere and they didn't invite him to the Oscars. But as a lot of people had noted that the Oscars, the first Oscar ceremony, wasn't what it is today. So it's not the slight that you think it is. But he did note in his book he was kind of pissed off about that. So I think, I don't know if that later on, he's like, how come I didn't get to go see Be There when my film won the first Oscar for Best Picture ever? And this is the only silent film of the silent era to win Best Picture. This is a true silent epic. I think Wellman did a hell of a great job and it launched him to become a name director and give him prestige and dignity to his name. I don't think now, they would really give a smaller director like this a chance like they did with William Wellman on Wings. How thrilling and how cinematic this film is because he really brought a certain perspective to it and Wellman himself considers it one of the films he's most proud of. This and Story of G.I. Joe, interestingly enough, so a film from World War One and a film from World War Two, both for different reasons. It is definitely one of his strongest films. So if you have seen Wings and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And I'm going to do Beggars of Life, the next film that I could at least find from William Wellman, next week on Tuesday or Wednesday. So check that out and thanks for watching.